Hey, welcome back to Atreyu News. Here's how Marine Le Pen is planning on making France great again. She's leading in the polls. Even the skewed polls she's leading in. Marine Le Pen's plans for France in 35 seconds. It is absolutely necessary to find the path to justice again, to put France back in order, to reign state order in the judiciary, in diplomacy. I think I'm in a good position to do this. Marine Le Pen laid out her policies on Saturday, her primary objectives being leaving the EU and the Eurozone, at least if relations with the bloc can't be renegotiated. She also stressed the need to make it easier to deport undocumented migrants and deny them French citizenship. In addition, she proposed banning all organizations linked to hardline Islam. This is a new crusade. Champions are rising across the Western civilization. As if God is not playing a part in this, the new renaissance is here. These people can either stand aside or get run over. It makes little difference at this point. The European Union's days are numbered. Shocking. The New York Times gives Carlos Slim a pass for his criminal conduct, and you'll never guess why. The New York Times has up until now refused to write any content critical of Mexican telecom multi-billionaire Carlos Slim Hilu, one of the richest men in the world, because he owns 16.8% of the newspaper giant. So let me get this straight. A Mexican billionaire owns 16.8% part of the New York Times. Now it's becoming quite clear why the New York Times writes hit piece after hit piece after Donald Trump. It's because it's getting funded by international billionaires that have nothing to do with America. Fans of Sherlock Holmes who read Rutenberg will note one billionaire escaped criticism. Rutenberg's article on billionaires in the media didn't bark at Carlos Slim. How could an article claiming Thiel Adelson and Huntsman were using their billions to influence media coverage omit the New York Times' largest shareholders? Slim has indeed received what he bargained for. Brian Stelter in another, is another critic of billionaires buying media outlets, and he indeed mentions Carlos Slim by name. We should view Russia today skeptically, as the Russian government funds RT, media analysis pointed out. Indeed, CNN, Brian Stelter, in a hit piece on Larry King, falsely claimed King's Aura TV was funded by Russian. In fact, King's show is distributed by RT, and King maintaining creative control. Yet the same hit piece Stelter observed, and that's what the ensuing controversy is all about. King's interview programs are produced by Aura, a media company owned by Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim. King owns a piece of the company. Will Stelter append a similar disclaimer on all reference to the New York Times gives Slim's considerable ownership interest in the Times? What's more is that Slim profits from immigration. Because of his cell phone monopoly, he receives exorbitant profits from calls made by America's Mexican population to relatives in Mexico. Should the Times be required to disclose in every editorial about illegal immigration that its largest shareholder profits from porous borders? Although we can see the foreign influence in American media is insidious, what's worse is how Slim gets a pass. He is a truly despicable man who has doomed millions of his fellow Mexicans to a life of poverty. One question you might have is, who is Carlos Slim and why should we care? That's a great question. The American mainstream media has given Slim a pass, even though economists estimate that Mexico's economy would be on par with the U.S.'s had Slim's not rigged the system in his favor, stealing hundreds of billions for himself, thereby robbing poor Mexicans of the multiplying effect of money. Mexican billionaire and crony capitalist Carlos Slim Hilu exploited and assisted in the impoverishment of his own nation. Slim's greed appears to know no bounds. Latin America and its 262 million subscribers to his telephone service isn't enough. The 200 companies Slim controls, from telecom to tobacco, bicycles to banking, airlines, railways, hotels, and printing, that occupy one-third of Mexico's leading stock market index. Carlos Slim is the majority shareholder in the most powerful newspaper in the world, the New York.
times. What's wrong with a businessman like Slim investing in a so-called prestigious newspaper? The New York Times would never strike a deal with a U.S. tycoon of similar profits for fear of triggering real or apparent conflicts between the newspaper coverage and the investors' interests, wrote Andreas Martinez of Slate. So there you have it. New York Times is no different than CNN or MSNBC. They are all controlled and operated by international billionaires for their own agenda. They care not who they destroy, they care not whose family is destroyed, for they have the mental illness, the greed of money and power. And once it sets in, there's no going back. It's a mental illness, they will crave all the money and all the power till all is destroyed, and even then, it will not be good enough, for these are drug addicts. The U.S. has received its infrastructure repair bill, and it's huge. The American Society of Civil Engineers has released its latest, latest infrastructure report card for the U.S. and its bill to fix it. From Wired, one of President Donald Trump's first promises after getting elected was to spend $1 trillion on infrastructure, bridges, roads, tunnels, pipes, dams, and whether you have had to evacuate a town in the shadow of a crumbling dam, buy filters for tainted municipal water, or even just bounce over potholes on a highway, you've experienced the problems the president alluded to. Well, it really is as bad as you think. The American Society of Civil Engineers has just released its latest infrastructure report card and grades the United States at a D+. Plus. That means the country's public works are in substandard condition with the risk of failure. The ASCE releases its reports every four years, and the mark hasn't changed since the last time. While our nation's infrastructure problems are significant, they are solvable, says ASCE President Norman Jean Maddy. But that'll take money. So $1 trillion, right? Great news, except the ASCE report says it'll take up to $4.59 trillion to bring things up to a B or adequate grade by 2025. That's a shortfall of a $2 trillion over current spending plans. Again, $1 trillion is nowhere near enough. Well, this sure is enraging. Because last time I checked, we spent over $5 trillion in the Middle East fighting an enemy who has not been destroyed, only accelerated. We could have rebuilt everything, folks. With that $5 trillion, we, we could have rebuilt everything. And how great would it have been? Bullet trains all over the place. You know, clean energy, green energy. Magnetic technology. And end of fossil fuels. We'll see what happens, but it is pretty easy to get enraged about something like this.